Hi everybody! Hi Dan! Hello. Welcome to our second installment of this new series of videos, breaking down videos, no, breaking down stories from a comedic point of view. This is why we have here comedian Dan Balkai. Yeah. Welcome back. Can you put a lot of applause in the, in the editing? Thank you. Uh, thank you. The crowd is into it. Okay, yeah. so in our inaugural video, we talked about Tyrion's comedy. Today, I want to talk about a different funny man, Sander the Hound Clegane. So when his mother is upset with him, she's like, Sander the Hound Clegane, you come right back in the house. Okay, so let's <laughs> talk about the Hound's delivery. His delivery is really deadpan. Yeah. Like he tells the joke. Needle. Oh, she named your sword. Lots of people name their swords. Lots of cunts. Well, yeah, very uh, cold delivery. Yes. You can do. You can use that delivery only when you're uh, uh, really brilliant okay. and sharp. Okay. Maybe provocative. Okay. Only uh, comedians like uh, Stephen Wright. I called the wrong number today. I said, "Hello, is Joey there?" And a woman answered. She said, "Yes, he is." I said, "Can I speak to him, please?" She said, no, he can't talk right now. He's only two months old. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll wait. Okay. Sarah Silverman. Yeah. You know, everybody blames the Jews for, for killing Christ, and then the Jews try to pass it off on the Romans. You know, I'm one of the few people that believes it was the blacks. Not a lot of comedians can do that. I can't. My, my jokes is, are not uh, uh, smart enough. No, I need no. to use uh, to it. facial expressions and uh, body and uh, changing my voice all the time. Eyebrows. I'm, I'm very what talented I'm, with uh, eyebrows. Yeah, I can do very, very special. Wow. Uh, wow. That's already really, really funny. Thank you. Okay, one dead band joke uh, there's this place i'm uh, going uh, to for lunch for okay. uh, the last two weeks okay uh, everything is for 10 shekels that's nothing okay. that's so really? with, with wow. today's economy <laughs> everything is for 10 shekels like pita with hummus 10 shekels falafel 10 shekels. 10 shekels and i had lunch there today and i realized what was the secret of the place okay it doesn't taste good <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it wasn't angry and it wasn't bitter. The Hound's comedy is very bitter yeah. and very angry. Bad night to be outdoors. You've got real powerful magic to figure that out. Did the Lord of Life whisper that in your ear? It's snowing, horse. It's windy. It's going to be a cold night. I don't think bitterness is funny. You don't? The crowd doesn't feel uh, comfortable when it just sees bitterness. You need to talk about things that you are bitter about, but in a light, more right. funny way. That's how uh, people can connect to that. Right. When you go on stage and all you uh, project is uh, bitterness and depression, the crowd doesn't laugh. And also, you can see it with right. the hound, that he's funny, laugh, but yeah. no one is laughing. Right. The joke is on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's making himself maybe laugh. He doesn't laugh. No one's laughing. No, no one's laughing. It's like, a, it's like a British thing. Like he's telling the jokes to himself, but he's very quick to think about really inventive and creative insults. Who taught you that shite? I bet his hair is greasier than Joffrey's cunt. Yeah, he's really on the beat all the time. That must be hard. Comedians usually have like a, a whole set ready. I knew that for for yeah for comebacks. I heard Jim Jeffries uh, a couple of times telling uh, a person in the audience uh, like, "Okay, I'm gonna leave you alone, just like your father did." <laughs> uh, so uh, it's a right. joke. Yeah, it, it right. always works. And maybe he had a good dad, so it's not a joke about him uh, specifically. Yeah, it's just like a generic. And, and thing. most dads are uh, pretty shitty. So, uh, <laughs> that's not true, only mine? No, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so, your ah, dad. Ah, dead fan! Was <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so, talking about dad pain, generally, like we talked about with Tyrion, he is endured, the hound has endured a lot of pain. Yeah, yeah, uh, as a comedian, I know a lot about pain. Okay, <laughs> I'm talking about his brother, pushing his face into the fire, burning half 
of his face. So did you suffer anything like that, Idan? Thank you. Worse. Worse. <laughs> he walks around with a face so yeah. hideous. Everywhere he walks, people, the first thing that they see is the pain, the, the worst moment in his life. That's like his ID, his calling card. Yeah, that's very obvious about the hound that yes. he uh, had to put up with some shit. Well, the hound carries uh, a real f f feeling of shame. I can on assume. His face. Yeah, he's, he's uh, deformed, and that's how he's. Uh, oh, that's the hound. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, it's been a long time since, uh, since I've seen uh, an episode. It's, that's how he's, he's look, he looks like? Okay. Yes, yes. And so, shame, can you empathize with shame? Yeah, I, I feel that uh, most comedians uh, have a great uh, shame they carry with them. Really? F yeah, for, uh, for different reasons, maybe even if it's just made up reasons, story, stories they tell themselves. Really? I want a girl to look at my dick and go, ugh, I wish it was black, and then blow a snot rocket on it. That's how they uh, deal with the feeling of shame. They go on stage, that's where you're most vulnerable. Yes, so the hound, he goes on stage, on his personal stage, to insult someone and then he feels better. Also because he was bullied. He was bullied by his older brother. So his brother probably made him hate everybody, have all these negative feelings. I don't give two shits about wildlings. Gingers I hate. And that's very good for comedians because comedians, they basically hate people. What do you mean? No, no, no. I mean, just like you people, you're... Uh... People? I don't have to listen to these insults. You people. I hear that all the time. Oh, you people are misanthropic. You people hate yourself. No, you but people, it's, oh, it's, not, it's, it's not true. It is true. <laughs> but you're not allowed to say that. I'm a comedian. I can talk about other comedians that okay. way. Not you. Here we go again. <laughs> Stereotypes. You know, you people are like that. You people, you hate people. You hate yourself. Some of my friends you are comedians. Oh, some of your friends are comedians. That's wonderful. No, it's, it's you. Huh? It's you. You're my comedian friend. I'm not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> really, like, like hateful comedy, that exists. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of comedians, good comedians use that hate. Actually, even Jerry Seinfeld is uh, considered yeah. to be misanthropic. Right. He says that about himself. Doug Stanhope is just full of poison on stage, he just hates. Well, these immigrants, they don't, fuck, they don't speak the language, they don't talk to them. <laughs> well, I solved your problem, that was quick. You know who speaks the language perfectly? Your next door neighbor. You've lived there eight and a half years. You've never said one fucking word to that guy. Comedians are miserable, but you have to keep a balance between your uh, okay. misery and your uh, funniness. Right, it has to be fun. You, you right. can be miserable, but then you go on stage, you can't go uh, full, full sad. Never go full bitter. No, never go full bitter. That's the first rule of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about humor? I, th I feel that the hound uses humor to push people away sometimes. Yeah, and his sword. <laughs> so physically, uh, physically beating people up and killing So you killing remember them. who the hound is, boo! Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just so you trying. were making a I'm joke just trying to be funny, okay, yeah. <laughs> the hound is, is, is a funny guy, like you like him, but you wouldn't like him to uh, come for dinner. No. Right? No. Because it's just too poisonous. But can you empathize, like, you know, like... And he could kill you and your family if he comes to dinner. That's also <laughs> That's a, a risk. We ask the maiden to protect Sally's virtue and keep her from the clutches of depravity. You're going to do all seven of the fuckers? Father! And we ask the stranger not to kill us in our beds tonight for no damn reason at all. But can't you empathize, you know, like you're in the, like the, the end of a relationship and then you just like to start to pick, like to tell jokes about, like bitter jokes about each other, trying to push the other person away to protect yourself? No, that's not my experience at all. No? I feel like just at the end of the relationship, you just feel pathetic. <laughs> you just feel like, why, why can't I love myself more? Why am I still here? You're not cracking jokes. <laughs>
You hate her, you hate yourself, you just want out. You're not telling jokes. It's ridiculous. You have a relationship. Three months ago, you were complete strangers, right. and now you want to kill each other. That's, that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. People are insane. People are insane. Thank you, Idan. Thank you, Gil. Thank you, Gil. Okay, I want to tell them about Patreon. Feel free to come in with what Patreon. Uh, is that like a character? No, no, in, it's what, uh, what you said. Lord of the Rings. What you told me, like really told me, and I told you, okay, say that thing. Oh, yeah. But, but keep it real. Listen, this guy is so focused on this uh, YouTube channel. That's amazing. So enthusiastic. It was really uh, surprising for me. He kept meeting me again and again just to. Uh, to get here uh, ready, did the research. It was fun. Just squeezed me until I got, I got nothing left. Everything I had to say about comedy is That's here. It. No, no, we'll do it again, we'll do it, it again. It was a lot of fun and I hope we'll do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. I don't get it.